Hello, so we had some fun in our last lesson making these crazy animal hybrid self-portraits um, and I'm going to talk you through now how to draw out um, your favourite or your most successful uh, collage using the grid method. Okay, so I've picked one of these and I'm going to go for this one that I'm going to draw out. So the first thing I did was to make a photocopy. You don't have to make a photocopy, but because I'm going to draw a grid on it, it it helps that I've got that original in case I go wrong, or so I've got it without squ squares drawn on it. Uh, but you can draw directly onto them. I've made a photocopy. I'm going to use my ruler, I'm going to use my maths, to divide this into squares of the same, um, the same measurements. Okay, so I'm looking at this. Um, if you can see my ruler there, I want that 16 because I know I can divide 16 by 4. Um, and I think 4 by 4 grids will work well on this. So I'm going to kind of move it so I think I can get that. It just gets that ear in there. So I'm going to put it along that line. I'm going to put little marks every 4. So I'm 0, 4, 8, 12, and there's my 16. Okay. Then we can come down the side. That's a bit longer this way, I think. So I'm still going to divide it by four, but it's going to go up to 20. I'm going to do a line here because I'm not following a particular line. So zero, four, eight, 12, 16, and 20 there. Now, I think I can just about see this, but if you can't, you can use a pen instead of a pencil if that helps you. I'm going to do it over here. I'm going to go up to 20 again. Let's make sure that's aligned. Okay, so on the 16, 12, 8, 4. So now I've just noticed my ruler's not quite straight, so the numbers are coming off there. So I need to do it about there just to make sure these are right. Hopefully that's right. Okay, we'll see on this, this bottom one, if this adds up to 16. Oh, I think it was better there. Maybe that one's on the wonk as well. So we've got to try and make these as straight as we can. So I'm actually going to bring that line into there. So four. It is important that your grid is as true as possible, as, as straight. So then you... Um, Things are accurate. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Once you've got the little dots or little notches, you join them up to make your grid. So it goes to there, and to there. So there's, there's our vertical lines. I'm going to go for the horizontal lines. Make sure I can see where I've put these little notches. Okay, so now I've got my squares on here, so I've broken it down. Now you can always add more. So if you've got a complex one, say you, you, you're struggling with where things are going here, on any individual thing, you can half it, quarter it. So here, I might make this one more complex. I probably wouldn't need it on this one, but if there's any where you think, oh, I'm not sure where that is, you can kind of make those grids smaller so it helps you later on when you're drawing out. Okay, and you could do it again, one centimeters, however much you need on there. So once you've done the grid on your photo, photocopy or your, your image, you need to draw a grid on your paper. Now you can do it exactly the same dimensions, four by four. You could shrink it, we won't be shrinking it, but it's part, you can do the squares on here. Um, as long as these are all the same as each other, they can be any size. So I'm gonna, just to show you, I can fit a five by five grid on here. So I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna use a ruler. So instead of the squares being four by four, they're gonna be five by five. So it's gonna go all the way to 20. 
15, because I've got one, two, three, four squares there, and I need one, two, three, four, five down here. So that's going to take me to 25. So line that up. Try and make sure this is parallel to your paper. And then just those little notches again. Five, 10, 15, 20. This will allow me to make my drawing a bit bigger. And it's always, I think, it's always better to have a slightly bigger, don't go smaller. You can use this method to do things really big. This is how artists um, enlarge things to go on murals, you know, like big things on walls. They will often use the grid method um, to do that. So it's a really good skill to know. Okay. Five, 10, 15, 20, and then just join them up. Now you don't want to do these too heavy. Doing these on this one quite light. You can do them heavy as you want on there so you can see them. But on here, they're going to get rubbed out at some point. It could be. Um, might be just shaded in, but you don't want to see them in the end. They're just to help you with the guidelines. So don't press down too hard on this section. Okay. So once you've got your grids drawn, as accurately as you can, you're gonna to start to do your drawing. Now what I'd recommend is sketching the whole thing and then adding tone afterwards. So for example, if I start here, I've got a nice simple square here. I'm thinking how far down is that of the square? I think it's about here. And that one, if I put where I think halfway is and a quarter, so it's somewhere between halfway and quarter, I think it's coming out here. So I'm looking at the lines and thinking about how far does this come in? Maybe just less than halfway, like that. Yeah, on this square, there's not much else. So I'll go onto this one. So this comes in a bit more than a quarter over here. So I think it's about here. And this one. So you haven't even drawn the extra lines here, but I'm just trying to figure out half in things, thinking about where they're gonna go. And you can, like I said, draw extra grid lines if you, if you think that's gonna help you. So that go on there. So I do a sketch like that on all these squares. Might um, do this one, looking at that, how close that is to that line there, how close it is to this line. Where does it come down? About here. So you're sketching these bits in. Just like that. You can add a few of the details basically just sketch it all lightly now when you've got it all lightly sketched and you're happy with where things are you're going to add tone then okay so that's when when it's all on there you start building up your tone adding your details and i'll just show you this bit i'm going to speed up this video so for example the back is very very dark isn't it so I'll try and put a dark tone on the back Um, and the, when I'm toning this one, because this is also quite dark here, putting this kind of tone on here and I'm realising my back needs to be even darker because that's getting lost in there. So then I'd bring that down. So just like when you're doing the proportions, which is where things are, how big they are, where they are in relation to everything else, um, it's similar when you apply the tone. You want to make sure things are the right darkness compared to each other. So you need dark, medium, and light tones as you're shading. So I've realized, you know, that needs to be quite dark, which means the back here really does need to be quite dark. When I'm shading, I'm using this side edge of the pencil on these parts, and then I'll use the tip if I need some kind of finer details or whatever, okay?
So I've got my uh, drawing up to about here and I'm um, think about what I'm doing. I don't know if you noticed, but on that kind of sp sped up video, uh, I had to sharpen my pencil a few times. Make sure your pencil remains sharp. That's going to be important. Um, now looking at it now, um, you know, I think I've got things more or less in the right place, but as I squint at it, or if you, if you look at the difference in tone, I can see this needs to be a lot darker. So if you look at these areas around here, here, I'm not dark enough. I have tried to darken it, you know, here, um, but I need to go darker. So I'm gonna have another little go at that. Okay, so that's my drawing, um, pretty much done. I could spend a lot longer on it, smoothing it out. It's very sketchy, um, developing up the dark bits a little bit more, but I'm gonna be done with that. Before I go, I'm gonna just go through a couple of things um, about mark making. Um, so obviously you've, you've seen me have a go at the, the goat, but there's different kind of animals. So as you're laying down your tone, your tone you can use your, um, uh, your pressure blending. So that's what I use a lot of the time. It's just going darker in the darker areas, gradually releasing the pressure to go lighter in the lighter areas. Okay. If you've got some lots of uh, finer details like around here, you can use stippling. So you can use like a dotty technique. Sometimes you might need to put your um, tone, your texture down using dots um, build that up in certain areas. Um, sometimes um, you might want to use little lines. So, for example, over here, I might want to build up little lines and then maybe leave a gap and build up another little line to get that kind of feathery technique. So, you know, you might need that. I'm not sure if any of the other animals will need you cross hatching, but you can do longer lines to build things up, maybe for long fur, you can bring things in a different direction. So you can just build up using longer lines for some textures, okay? If you've got something that's a bit woolly, you might wanna use that scumbling technique where you, um, like little scribbles, if anybody had a sheep or anything, I don't think so, but if you've got that kind of texture, you can still add pressure on darker bits, lighter bits, you can use that kind of scumbling technique. Um, I don't know if you saw on the video, but sometimes you might need to use your rubber to get some of the lighter bits. You might shade around, and then for example, on a bit like here, um, let's say this, this part here, so we shade that all in. You might add some texture like that. Sometimes you might need to rub away lighter sections like that under the eye there. You might need to rub back. Then you can use your finger to smooth things out if you want to, if you need to. You might rub back a bit more and then you might go over it with those short marks to build up the texture, okay? So there's lots of different ways of using your pencil to get the texture that you need and use your eraser as well. It can be a really good tool, not just for rubbing out and sometimes I had to rub out it. If you saw in that last video, I thought my nose was too high, I rubbed it out, moved it. But you can also use it, you know, as a, a lightener, you know, like if you, if you need a lighter section, sometimes it makes sense to darken it Lighten the bits you want light, smooth this out, maybe lighten it again, and then start adding these finer details on top. Okay, so you want, what I wanna see at the end is some really dark areas. So you're working hard to create some dark areas, some light areas, perhaps where you've rubbed back. Um, and all the time looking at your picture. My biggest tip to get better at drawing is to look at this more than you look at this. Look at the thing you, you're trying to draw more than the drawing you're making because then you will see the differences and you will see where you can right, amend that, I need to change that. Like I've noticed that my smile's a little bit more tipped up here, so perhaps I should you know, work on changing that a bit. But if, the more you do, the more you notice these small differences and that will improve your technique. Um, if I don't get back into school, I hope that um, uh, your teachers can send me your pictures because I'm really looking forward to what you, you get to do. All right.
Have a great time.